Hi, my name is Robin Moffat. I'm a developer advocate at Confluence. And today I want to show you how you can use KSQL DB to do joins between a stream of events and a lookup table, which actually have in another Kafka topic. Now, that lookup table data could be coming from a database somewhere else or a flat file, or you could be producing to it directly. But however you get the data into there, that lookup data also sits in a Kafka topic. So let's have a look at what we've got. I say show streams, we can see we've already got a KSQL DB stream called orders. This data comes from a topic also called orders. And we can say select star from uh, orders and emit changes. And we can see this data scrolling by. So as the data arrives on that source topic, we can see it in KSQL DB. And we've got the uh, timestamp here, we've got the order ID, we've got how many things they ordered, the delivery address. And we've got this thing here, item ID. So the item ID is a foreign key out to a lookup table. So our lookup table is going to have a primary key, which is going to match our foreign key here. And it's going to give us more information about the item that was part of that order. So the different attributes of it. So things like the cost or who made it or all those different characteristics that we want to bring in to our orders as they arrive in the system. So let's have a look at that data. We've got the data sat in another Kafka topic. So it looks like this. We say print item details from beginning limit 10. Show me the first 10 messages in that Kafka topic. Now, as I said before, this Kafka topic could be populated probably using Kafka Connect to pull in this data from a database. So like snapshot the contents of a database table and use CDC to keep it up to date with any subsequent changes to that table. Or it could be coming from a message queue anywhere else. It could be coming from a flat file. Also, we could have an application that just produces into that topic directly. But the point is we have a topic with this information in that we want to join to our events as they arrive. There's one very, very important thing that we need to ensure in this topic that we're going to use for doing lookups. And that is that the key of the messages in the topic is the primary key on which we're going to join. So let's have a look at that and see what it actually means. So here's our value part of the Kafka message. So Kafka messages, they're key value pairs. So the value, it's got things like the make of the item, it's got the model, it's got the color, it's got the category and so on. It's also got the ID. Now the ID is the primary key. That's the field that we've said in our data model uh, identifies uniquely each individual um, entity um, element. So we're gonna say that item ID here we need to make sure that it forms the key of the Kafka message. This is super important for the joins to work. Now, as it happens, we're actually duplicating that data here. We don't have to have that ID in the value part of the message. It just happens we happen to do so with this data set here. But here's our item ID, our primary key, and it forms the key of that Kafka message. Super important point. So now we're gonna model that data and we're gonna declare the primary key as that field there. The rest of the, the schema is going to get picked up using Avro because we've got the schema for that topic in the schema registry. So this looks like this. We're going to say create, and instead of creating a stream in KSQL DB, we're going to create a table. Streams are basically Kafka topics, unbounded series of events, but with a schema. Fairly simple, straightforward to understand. Whereas tables are Kafka topics also with a schema but tables are state for a given key. And that's why keys are so important. That's why I kind of went on about it a bit then before. So you've got the key and it's got a value. That value might change. So as um, orders, sorry, as items, maybe they change cost, you get a different event on that Kafka topic. And it says, well, for this same key as before, the unit cost is now this. So the state in that table will change. So here we do this. We say create table. It's called item reference. We say the item ID is the field that we're going to call the primary key and that Kafka message. And it's a varchar. And then we say the value format's Avro. Um, so it's going to pull in the rest of the schema for that message from the schema registry. And then we've got the Kafka topic, which is where it's actually coming from. So we go and create that table. 
and we can say, let's uh, have a look at the table structure. And we can see we've got the item ID here and it's um, shown as primary key, which is really important. We've got the ID, which is actually redundant here. We don't need to actually include that in the source data. And we've got make, model, color, and so on. So now we can use this data to go and join to our orders as they arrive in the system. And it's going to look like this. We're going to say, let's do a select. So we say select the order time as the order timestamp, make it human readable, pull in the order ID, the item ID, and then pull in the item make, the uh, color, the unit cost. Then we say, well, how many were ordered? And they say, well, if we know how many were ordered and we know how much they cost, we can work out the total order value. And then we've got the address for the order. So here we're doing a calculation based on kind of one of the uh, values in the event as it arrives, combined with a value in that lookup table. And then we're doing from orders, we've got inner join. We're going to change that to a left outer join. So an inner join would only return a result if you have an entry on the table to which you're joining, which you may want to do. And inner joins are very useful for ensuring you don't get nulls everywhere, but it also means that you don't see if you've got nulls. So if you imagine an order arrives, and for whatever reason we don't know that the, the primary key, so something's gone wrong with our referential integrity somewhere, we would end up pulling in that order and dropping it out of this process if we didn't have a value to go and look up on the other side. So if we do left out a join, that means we'll just get nulls, which will be useful for to, to actually show if there are any items missing. So here we're selecting from orders our stream. We're doing a left out of join to item reference, our table, which by the way is still backed by a Kafka topic. We're just modeling it semantically different. And then we say do a join on a foreign key, primary key relationship. And we're saying limit changes, limit five. So just show me the first five results as they come back. And we can see now, this is the time at which the order was placed uh, here. You got the order ID. Here's the item that they bought. And now here are the attributes for that item, the make, the color, the unit cost, how many did they buy? And therefore what was the total order value? So we can use that select and we can say emit changes and don't put a limit. So now it's just gonna emit changes. So every single message on that Kafka topic, every single one which exists already, and as it arrives, we do the join against. Now having it scrolling by on the screen is less than useful because we know it works now, we've checked it. So let's cancel that. And now let's say, well, actually, we're gonna go and route this information over to a new stream. So we've got our stream here. We're gonna call it orders enriched. We could change the topic name at this point. We could put with Kafka topic equals like orders or give it a different uh, Kafka topic name. And then we've got our fields that we're pulling in. We've got our as to change the, to alias the field names if we want to. Uh, we've got our inner join, which we'll ch change to a left outer join. Partition by means that we're gonna set the key on the target stream to order ID. So now we've created that query and created that stream. So we say show streams. It's got a new stream here called orders enriched. It's backed by a Kafka topic called orders enriched. And we can see this, we can say describe orders enriched. And it says it looks like this. Here's our schema. So you've got the order ID, which is the key on it. You've got the timestamp, the item ID, and so on. And we could select like order ID and the item, uh, the make and the color and the total order value. So this is the nice thing about it being SQL. You can just project different fields that you're interested in. So select those from there, emit changes. And now we get to see all of those different ones. And I think I spotted a few nulls in there. Let's uh, search up. Okay, so here we can see this order here, there was no actual reference for that item. So we could run that query again. We could say, well, pull in the item ID from the order stream and go and check out, do a bit of kind of diving down into why didn't we have an entry on that uh, item reference table on that topic that we've got. And maybe you need, we'd need to reprocess those order events. But that's how you can do joins. And now what we've got is, if I say show topics, We've got a topic called orders enriched. I can say print orders enriched and you get the same dump of information. But the point is here is it's just a Kafka topic. It's a Kafka topic with a timestamp. It's got a key, which is the order ID, which makes sense. And then we've got the value as well, which is the nice enriched denormalized set of data. 
So that's how you do joins within KSQL DB. You can do stream table joins, so an event joining to some state. You can do stream stream joins, so like take two streams of events and join within a given time window. You can also do table table joins as well. With more recent versions of KSQL DB, you can also do uh, multi-way joins. So instead of just one to one, you can do uh, join to this and join to this and also join to this. So make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for lots more videos all about KSQL DB, Confluent Platform, Apache Kafka and lots more.